we're, we're kind of at the end of, of day one, and it's been great to share these um, uh, observations, and I'll be very interested to hear how our perspectives are further changed over the next, uh, over the next two days. But um, just to step back to this morning, uh, I spoke a little bit about this emerging dialogue on campus that I've been so excited to be a part of, this dialogue on the intersection of art, design, and science, and the, and the role that the Nature Lab has been able uh, to play in that. Uh, and one of the champions of that dialogue and that discussion is our president, uh, John Maeda. And he's here, and I'm uh, pleased to, to welcome him and uh, introduce him to you to this afternoon. Oh, great segue. <laughs> John? So this is the end of day one. So it means the guys are pretty filled up. And I don't have a ball like you do, so I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. So I've been seeing them around campus, and uh, it's a symbol. It's a symbol of an idea that is living strongly at RISD. It's uh, not a new idea this year. It's an idea that's been around for a long time. And um, knowing that we have linkages to the Buckminster Fuller religion, I'm, 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 I'm with all that. And the many other people who uh, work in this wonderful space of uh, design and science, uh, art and imagination. Um, that's who we are. Uh, we've always been that, and this is one of our flavors, and I'm proud that this flavor is pure uh, in its form. Um, I have to say that this is a space that I personally feel strongly about uh, because I believe that things that cross and make a difference. Um, everyone loves Reese's peanut butter cups, I know, the peanut butter and the chocolate, together, a better taste. A combination of design and science, you know, art and engineering. All these passages uh, taste great, but they don't happen so often because the people that do that don't occur so often. But I think that all of you here are examples of those wonderful, odd occurrences that nature has produced. You know, when I walk outside uh, Market Square, you can see uh, our trustee and artist, Stephen Metcalf's uh, sculpture inspired, and John Hinckley. Uh, so, hey, pardon me? And John Higley, excuse me. Uh, a construction uh, based upon the uh, polyhedron and other shapes and forms. You can, nothing round, so I know it's a little bit round, certain line lines. Um, you see evidence of twisted minds producing things that you probably would never see um, unless you were curious about how structures uh, intersect and form new patterns. Uh, not just patterns you can see, but patterns in the space that produce structure. Now, I, um, I've had this wonderful um, moment in the last uh, 48 hours where uh, I was on a plane coming from the West Coast. I was at an at alumni uh, program in Seattle, our first alumni program. You are at Rhode Island School of Design, by the way. If you noticed <laughs> RISD, it's uh, really the art and design school out there. And um, when I like connect with alumni, you know, they're always curious about what's happening. And when I'm in a city, I, I like to see what's out there as well. And I was in San Francisco uh, visiting a friend at the Exploratorium. Um, Dennis Bartel, the director there. Uh, who's been to Exploratorium? Okay, well, this is a lot for an audience, so definitely you are part of this religion. Um, but Exploratorium, um, uh, I'd been to it many times, but I had never known its story. Its story is fascinating, and so they gave me the, the book uh, about the founder. It's called Something Incredibly Wonderful Happens. Uh, it's about Frank Oppenheimer, the founder. Uh, Frank Oppenheimer was the younger brother of Robert Oppenheimer, who worked on the Manhattan Project. Both of them worked on the Manhattan Project. Robert was the one who perhaps was the one who became the symbol of it all. Uh, Frank was someone who was labeled as a communist. And because of McCarthyism, uh, his life was forever changed. He couldn't get a job in a university. 
even though he was one of the nation's top physicists. He ended up in a mountain in Colorado uh, with his family and um, began to raise cattle and was itching to get back to teach with his curiosity of science, understanding how things work with his hands. And no one would let him teach. But there was this one school that was missing a teacher for science. And they had to like let him teach because he was the only guy available for all for miles and miles around. He taught science. And, uh, but he taught science in a way where he needed everyone to touch it, feel it, understand it, take it apart, smell it. And a few years later, um, what happened is um, places like Caltech were getting these like amazing high school kids from this unheard of school somewhere in the mountains in Colorado and discovered that it was uh, Frank Oppenheimer who was in the mountains teaching science in a very different kind of way, a way where art and science collided, a way that you know, it wasn't about logic or imagination, it was both at the same time. And lo and behold, his career changes. Uh, he ends up in San Francisco. He's this, there's this airplane hangar that he's able to uh, borrow for a dollar a month. And Exploratorium happened. It's a place where art and science are this fertile place where it's not science, it's not art. Um, and I've always known these kinds of places. But all these places come from some deep human question. When you think about Buckminster Fuller's where, where he was in his life, a great change, nuclear energy, all these things. Um, these people all arose in a time where the world was totally topsy-turvy. We think our economy is tough right now. Um, things like the world wars were things that were formative and created these kinds of minds. And I think that these kinds of movements that still live around the country are all linked to that curiosity um, and the wonder and also the sad devastation of humanity at the same time. They're all linked in some way. We're all trying to figure out like, what does it mean to be a person, a human? It is about peace in the end, I believe. And when I walk around, when I came to design science last year, and I, 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 met, a, I met a gentleman from Russia, I'm not sure if he's here. He pulled something out of his backpack. Dimitri. Yeah, I said, hi, Dimitri. He says, hello. And he pulls out his backpack, and he pulls out this thing. And it's like, suddenly it becomes like gigantic. <laughs> you know? I'm like, how'd you do that? You know? But I was like, wow. You know, this kind of thinking is alive and well. It seems like science, and it's human at the same time. It's a delectable, it's exciting. And I'm so proud to have it here on campus um, uh, all the time in this way. In closing, uh, one thing um, we're very active now uh, at RISD nationally is to talk about the, the challenge we have in America, which is so focused now on educating to innovate. And so you may have, if you're teachers, you'll know about the STEM agenda, science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Uh, STEM and STEM classes will save America. Uh, STEM is what got us to the moon. Uh, STEM is what's gonna save uh, our future economy. Let's educate kids in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, things that are measurable, quantifiable, reproducible. But if you think about this work you guys all do, or even if you don't do it, if you come here to love it, uh, it isn't just STEM work, it's STEAM work. It has art thrown into the core of it. And so nationally, we're talking to more policymakers about, hey, well, STEM is really great. The STEAM is even better. In Congress, we had a congressional briefing that um, we, had, uh, hundreds, we had 120 people show up from all of America to vouch for the importance of left brain and right brain, right brain innovation together. We had the Americans for the Arts. We had the um, uh, National Academy of Science people. And so we, we, we begun that dialogue. We had a National Science Foundation funded workshop hanging out in Nature Lab. Some of our top scientists and educators nationally were hanging out here. They're wondering, they're looking for this thing that you've all known all your lives, you people who are design science people. This curiosity, now the country is, wants to find it, like they once found it in, the, in Buckminster Fuller's era. They're looking for it, they can't find it. It's all in you guys. But the education system doesn't produce it, K to 12. So turning STEM into STEAM is important to us. 
we have a, a House uh, a bill actually on the floor. Um, it won't pass because Congress is kind of crazy right now. <laughs> but we have uh, three states that have come in to support the idea, stamp the steam. Uh, it intends to transform the America Competes Act to inject STEAM legislation, adding art to STEM curricula in America. This is what I hope can, can it, these are the kind of things we hope we can do at the national level um, to change how we think about STEM. STEAM is much better. It, uh, it's good for your skin too. <laughs> so I'd like to thank you for um, a great first day. I'm, I'll, I'll see more balls floating around campus so I'll know what's happening. I want to thank Neil for his leadership and to our Foundation Studies Division that uh, knows how important form and exploration of form is uh, in its exotic form um, can make a difference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much.